Hello, my name is Andy. Um, I'm a backend engineer, previous backend engineer on, this, uh, on the integrations team, and now I'm uh, at Security Policies. And um, I'm going to show some improvement areas for the GitLab for Jira Cloud app. And um, yeah, how it compares to the DVCS um, feature in Jira. Um, right, yeah, so uh, basically, DVCS and, and the um, GitLab app compared as like DVCS as, as the feature that's um, developed and maintained by, by Atlassian Jira. And it's going to be deprecated for Jira Cloud. And what it does, it shows um, development information next to Jira issues. So I have a um, Jira issue here and um, there's this panel on the sidebar, which um, yeah, shows links to create branches, commits, and it can also show links to existing branches. And this is what both the app and the DVCS do. Um, it's currently not possible to show how DVCS works for Jira Cloud because it's um, it's not available anymore. Um, it works for existing setups, but it, it's not possible to set it up again uh, right now. Um, Okay, so I'm going to show the GitLab for Jira app. Um, so to install it, uh, we just have to search for it. This one. And okay, seems like it's done. So getting started. And um, oh, I think this is the wrong screen. This is I see this because I have the I previously installed the app. Uh, so this is the screen that people would probably yeah would see uh, after the first install. And um, the setup for for GitLab.com is pretty easy. Just choose GitLab.com, save it, and then sign in to GitLab. Um, Okay, so what just happens, uh, there was a pop-up window on, on my other screen, so you didn't see it. Um, and I did the OAuth authentication, and now I'm logged in. So you can see my username is up here. And now I can add namespaces. And namespaces, in this case, means groups. Um, so I have a test group here that I'm going to link. All right. Um, and my test group already has a merge request. It actually has a branch, a merge request and a commit. And they both mentioned this Jira issue, issue test 42, um, which I have open here. And if the merge request title or description um, mentions this issue, if the commit message men mentions it, it or the branch mentions it, it turns up in the development panel. which wasn't the case here. And this is kind of expected because um, for it doesn't sync historic data. It actually should sync um, merge request data, but I think there's a delay because we do this in, in the background job. Um, so I would expect the merge request to show up here at some point, but not the commit and not the branch. If we click this, oh, that's not what I wanted to show. Um, I think this only works if there's already something linked because then you can open a pop-up window and then there is more things to show. Um, anyway, that's the setup for, for gitlab.com. Um, it's rather easy and I can also show what happens if I create a new merge request now. Um, so let's do this here. To add something, commit it. We can also um, add more to it. it. Just has to mention this um, somewhere in the commit message. Okay, um, let's also mention this on the branch so we get all the things. Oh, I think this didn't work because I already have a branch link like this. No problem, I can just do something else. 
Okay, create a merge request. All right, there we go. And this is not also expected to show up here. Some uh, some delay, I guess. Okay, can we wait for a little bit? Let's see, so this is the link I. Oh, every time we re reload this page, we have to sign in again because it loses the um token. So end this test. Group. Oh, I know why this doesn't doesn't work because I'm not in the correct project. So. Um, okay, so let's do it again. Something here, test forty two. Yes, test. Two. Okay, and it comes to merge request. Let's see if it now appears. Yes, now we got all the information. We have the branch, the commit, and the pull request. Um. Right, and maybe I can also show now what happens if uh, we install the app. So I'm going to. Uninstall it. And then my data here should disappear, right? And I'm going to install it again. And what I'm expecting now is that the data will stay away. But I think there's a small chance, actually, that when we install the same app, that the data gets restored. So give it a try. All right. Okay, it's still gone, which is good because then I can show what happens when you first sync the app. So I'm going to sign in again. That's my test group. And then it should hopefully do the initial sync. Some delay. Or maybe not. Okay. So that's uh, another improvement area, I guess. Um, the, yeah, the initial thing, um, even though it doesn't work here, it should actually work. Maybe this is a bug we have to look into. Um, but in any case, it should only link the merge request, but it shouldn't um, have the branch or commit. And it, it's also limited to the um, I think to the latest 400 merge requests um, because there are some performance concerns when we do the initial sync. Um, and with DBCS, it does a full historic sync. So um, every every um, merge request commit or branch should appear. Um, and there's another limitation because um, the setup for self-managed um, users is quite complicated. So I'm going to unlink this and change to GitLab self-managed. I have a self-managed instance running here, which is uh, on Gitpod. And the first thing um, that's required is to have the instance publicly available. So I have to 
expose the four thousand part here and copy this. And then I can paste it here. And this fails. And this is because we have to do some initial setup steps. So let's look into that. So I'm going to go to our documentation. All right, and there's a guide to um, connect it to self-managed. So first thing we have to do is to um, set up OAuth authentication. And for that, we have to go to the admin panel. Applications. New application. So if we are using the official marketplace listing, this should be the uh, redirect URL. Your app, the name doesn't really matter. Turn this off. Uh, let's double check. Trusted confidential checkboxes. Um, select the API code, scope, save. API, save. Okay, then we have to copy this. Go to settings general. on this and paste the ID here. Okay. Um, that's it. Then, um, okay, so, so then the next step after setting up auth is to go to, so in general, um, to the same place actually again, and then at gitlab.com as proxy URL. Oops, save. Okay. And now we should be able to do this. All right, and then we actually show the link to the documentation. Maybe this should be in the previous step. And then we can sign in to our instance. So there's a pop-up window again, which you probably can't see because it's on my other display. Okay. And then we can link namespaces. And I have a Jira test group here, which I'm going to link. And this should also do sync data. Ah, oh, this time it actually works. So the initial sync sync one one metro request, it's called pull request in Jira. That's here. Okay, and from there on, we can pretty much do the same with the self managed instance uh, push branches and commits. Um, but the initial setup is quite challenging and um, the guidance in the app is probably um, a good place to start improving. And I think we can automate a few of those setup steps by auto-generating the OAuth application. Um, maybe just have a button to, to fill all the settings and um, yeah, and then it's, it's ready to go basically. 
So those, those are the main improvement areas, the initial data sync and the setup for self-managed. Thanks for watching.